Hey everybody, for this tutorial I'm going to show you how I use this beautiful floral mesh stencil and a tool to create the um, vertical lines on this top tier and also how I made these wafer paper flowers. So let's get started. First we're going to use the zero grade wafer paper to make these flowers and I'm just cutting this into strips and then I'm going to cut them into squares. Ish. These don't have to be exact. It's an abstract flower, so just the approximate size. And, and they don't even have to be all the same, just around the same size. And I'm just cutting a rough petal shape, and I'm adding a little texture to the ends of this by just going back in and cutting a little zigzaggy pattern out of the top. And I did this to a bunch of them. And then to make them, I'm using water, some glycerin. I'm adding about would this be about half a teaspoon to about four, four to six tablespoons of water. Maybe a little bit more. We'll say about a half of a cup of water. And then I'm just taking those petals and I'm dipping them into that solution and putting them on a pan, a nonstick pan that is medium heat. And what I'm doing here basically is I am dehydrating them. And that adds that um, kind of lacy texture to the petals. And once we get those all done, we're going to start assembling our center to the flower here. I'm just using another strip of paper, of the wafer paper, and dipping it in that same solution. And then just wrapping it around the end of my floral wire that I had bent into a hook shape. Now, I did this to three of them, but I'm only going to show you the one because you'll get the idea. And then once these centers have been assembled, you can right away go ahead and start adding those petals. Now I'm just adding them in a typical pad, uh, petal pattern, flower pattern, just kind of overlapping them. The first two to three petals in the center, you just kind of want to wrap around each other and then um, add your next layers overlapping. And I just have that one draped over the side because that's going to help it dry in the right position so that those petals don't droop down too much. But these kind of petals are really quick. These kind of flowers, they're so quick to put together. And just add a little bit more of that water where needed to get them to attach. Now don't add so much that you're disintegrating your water, just a bit so that it sticks to itself. Now I'm using this really pretty mesh stencil with some royal icing and I'm just showing you the consistency there. It's about peanut butter consistency, a little thinner. You can add some corn syrup to that if you want to make it a little bit more elastic. I don't know, it just kind of depends on your comfort zone. and trick to doing these stencils is to start kind of in the middle and brush out to the outside edges with your spatula. Um, that way you're not moving the stencil as much. Sometimes if you go from the outside in, you can kind of shift it around and it messes with your pattern. And I just put this on a, a rolled out piece of fondant that's about, uh, about an eighth of an inch thick. And I have it just cut to the size of my cake. I had measured the height and the circumference and I just cut the piece to that size, because this is going to wrap around the cake. It's going to be a paneled piece. And once you have enough on your stencil, you don't have to overload these stencils, because honestly, it's only going to go through these small little tiny holes. That's what I do love about the mesh stencil, is um, you don't have to worry so much about it bleeding through. If you, if you scrape on it too much, it will, a little bit, but they're a little bit more full, full safe. Is that the word, phrase I'm looking for? And once you remove that one, that first section, go ahead and wash off your stencil and let it dry a little bit. I like to pat it dry with um, paper towels. And then by the time you're ready to use it again, that first section, if you use royal icing, should be basically dry. And you, these um, stencils also are great because you can line them up so that you have a continuous pattern. I did accidentally on one I think it was this part. I didn't get them exactly close enough together. So there's a little bit of a seam, but you know what? Nobody's gonna look that close at your cake. And if they do, they really need to um, get a hobby <laughs> and not overanalyze one little seam. I mean, come on, we're a human. Yeah, you can see a little bit of a line there, but not too much. And just continue this across your whole piece of fondant.
And once we have that all done, we're just gonna set it to the side to kind of dry and firm up. But in the meantime, I had went ahead and I had put a piece on the top. I just cut a circle of fondant, the same fondant, and put it on the top and cut it down to size with an X-Acto knife and had it in the freezer for about 20 minutes to firm up. I didn't show the frosting of this cake, but you can go back and look at how I frost cakes on many, one of my many other <laughs> tutorials. It's all the same, basically. And I just used a dowel, a plastic dowel, to wrap that fondant around to transfer it onto the cake. Now you'll find that when you have a deeper fondant, the deeper the color is, the more saturation of color there is, it's a little bit more um, stretchy and flexible, which I kind of wrestled with a little bit here. Um, if I had let it set out a little longer, I wouldn't have had that much of a problem, but I, I didn't really have the time to wait. As we know, time is not our friend sometimes. So I had to go ahead and transfer it on there. And it's fine. I just kind of pushed that fondant down in where I wanted it and it worked. I'm just making sure I have air bubbles removed. And here you can see I'm just pushing it down towards the, bowl, the board. Since there's not a lot of um, royal icing on there, you don't have to worry too much about um, messing with the design. I just used some dragees. This was an afterthought. I just added a little water and I'm using some dragees in the center of some of these flowers just for an added touch. I can't just leave well enough alone. I have to add extra things, I always do. Now we're gonna get our top tier here. I'm just rolling out the same fondant to about the same thickness, actually a little thicker. I think I left this about a quarter of an inch thick because when you're pressing in a pattern, you're thinning it out. But same thing, I measured the circumference and the height of the cake and I cut my piece of fondant to size. I just put a little cornstarch on the side there and I'm gonna use this strip cutting tool to add that vertical texture. Now just press it in after you dip it into the cornstarch, but keep an eye on making sure that you're not pressing it into far because you don't want your piece of fondant to fall apart when you are transferring it on. You don't want to cut all the way through it. You're just adding that texture on the outside part of it. And I added a little piece of acetate here for easier transfer. There is a piece underneath it. I don't know where that footage went, but there's a piece of acetate underneath of it. And then I have another piece there I'm putting shortening on. And I put shortening on both of them just to hold them in place. And then I just flip it over Remove the back piece and it's ready to be transferred. Now I'm just adding a little bit of shortening on there. And that cake is just covered with some, um, I think I have white chocolate ganache on that one actually, colored the same as the fondant. And then just remove your excess using a ruler, cut through both pieces, overlap them, cut through both pieces and then line them up together. That way you have a perfect place um, where the two pieces meet. I did put it in the refrigerator to let that fondant firm up to make it easier to remove that extra piece off the top with just a straight a blade. Um, that is a clay cutting tool. Um, you could also use an X-Acto knife or just a sharp knife. And then I'm just using my tools, my other tools, Dresden tool, just a cake scraper, whatever you have that you can redefine those lines. Because like I said, same thing um, with a fondant that is deeper color, it does tend to stretch a little bit more. So you might have to redefine your, um, your details a little bit. And I'm just using milkshake straws or bubble tea straws. People call them different things. Added a little bit more of that ganache to glue the top tier onto the bottom. And then I'm just pushing that fondant down to meet the other tier. You don't want to push so hard that you are removing that texture. I don't know who keeps walking through that frame. I think that's my older son. <laughs> I got tired of editing him out, or editing the kids out when they were on break. So sorry about that. And then I'm just using floral wire that I have bent into the shape of a U, kind of like a hairpin, to attach those flowers to the cake. I wanted them to have long stems, and that's just the floral wire and I think that's a really cool effect. I think it really accents the very subtle white royal icing that's on the bottom. I think there's, that brings the higher contrast in the pattern or the design. So you have different texture on the top and a pattern on the bottom. I hope you enjoyed it.
So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.